Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.11. A while back somebody asked me to take a look at the updated version of the Al Centaur slash DeQ Baran Energia mod. And this update was by Papa Sid. And this is what it looks like right now in 1.11 after I've taken it out. Uh, I put the parts together and we'll talk about that. But there are some obvious problems with it. Maybe you can already tell. But before we get into the details, let's, well, actually we're going to get into the details right away. Let's take a look at the structure of the mod, what you get in the zip file once you unzip it. We have a folder called For Realism Overall, For Stock Game, and Ships. So this is the craft file, which we are not going to be using, and I'll explain why. Uh, so for realism overhaul, it's got click-through blocker, toolbar control, Cramex autopilot, which I guess is for the landing. There's a realism overall folder that has uh, these configs for the inner gear and a config for Baran outside that folder, which is interesting. And then RO engines. For, but you'll still need to put the stuff from the stock game in, otherwise you won't get the parts because the parts are here. So you have to put these first and then add those other things. So it's all split into a bunch of folders. This is mostly energy stuff, but, but with a brand T, and this actually has the brand stuff in it. And then Kerbal Joint Reinforcement and KSP Wheel. So that's there. But taking a look at the For Realism overall folder, you'll note that the whole size of this unpacked is 400 megabytes. And that's a lot bigger than the old mod was. The original Deku slash Al Centaur uh, brand Energia mod. That's a mouthful. But anyway, it was only 100 megabytes. So where is all this coming from? Well, it's coming from RO Engines because uh, this bundled the entirety of RO Engines. All of it. All 330 megabytes of it. Which is unnecessary. It's got Aerobee parts. The only engines that we actually need are from the Real Engines pack. The, they are uh, the RD-170, the RD-0120, and the RD-58. That's it. And altogether, it's just a few megabytes. And then we have all this other stuff, including Raider Nick's mod. I mean, uh, I'm, I thought Raider Nick did not like his stuff being part of the RO Engines pack, but here it is. We've got Araby, Juno 2, Cosmos, and Thor engines in a Baran Energia mod. Please don't do this. <laughs> Please don't do this to me. So one thing I've done, and I don't know if it'll cause a problem or not, is I deleted that. I don't have enough space. I've got enough stuff in this install. So I deleted that and just put the real engine pack, which is where the engines are from. So that is what we're going to use. The, the RO engine pack does do other things. Uh, it adds texture, unlimited shininess to the engines. But that's a, and probably changes its names and creates other variants, but we don't need any of that. We don't need the hundred other engines that are part of this and the fact that it makes the size of the mod four times what it was originally. Now, taking a look at the mod in Kerbal Space Program, well, since we aren't using the RO engine hack for the engines and I'm using real engines instead, I'm not going to be using the craft file that comes with it, which is a good idea not to do because the craft file has information baked into it and somebody actually using the parts from the inventory will may get different results. For instance, the craft file has baked in the fuel quantities, uh, certain scaling information, node information, and stuff like that, and that can be messed up if uh, compared to the parts that are in the inventory. So let's just put it together and see this situation in detail. So Baran, uh, obviously we'll begin with that first. So typing it in, we indeed get the cockpit. Now we'll talk about scaling in a moment, and but uh, you might have noticed this seems really big. We've got a bunch of nodes here, we need to make sure we get on the right one. And that seems to line up well enough. And then the left wing. Right wing. Left elevon. Right elevon. The tail. That has a good node there. Unfortunately, the rudder is much like the rudder in on the shuttle in that uh, 
It, it likes to be its own wacky self. Maybe... Oh, no, it does have a node there, I see. Uh, it doesn't seem to want to attach. <laughs> there is there's a little green spot on it, but... So, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put it on the old-fashioned way. For now. I don't anticipate that it's going to be... Well, it's not the major issue that I'm gonna be talking about here. The airlock, I guess, we'll put in. Front landing gear. I have no idea why the front landing gear is a separate entity there, and it says non-RO. Uh, it's baked into this part, and it's like that. That's I don't know why the door closes before it retracts on the retract when it does it in the right order on extension. That's just weird. But we don't have the engines on it. That's the RD-58. So let's get the RD-58. Nah, not that. Okay. And the one from the real engine pack is this one. And again, it's uh, essentially identical to the one in real en uh, RO engines, except that one's shinier. Now, there is a problem, though. They look small, don't they? Well, let's check the scale of this, finally. Well, that's, that's already a 6-meter thing. This is too big. So that's an interesting fact. It is a very, very big Beren. It seems to be scaled a little bit too large. And in fact, that's true of the rest of the parts as well. So there's a central power unit. So I don't know why it's called a power, power unit when it's actually the decoupler. But maybe that's just uh, the jargon they use. As you can see, it's the brace. That the uh, I don't I also don't know why there are two versions of the second stage. Let's see if they're different sizes. Uh, nope, they're the same size. So that's that tank, and then of course there's the oxygen tank on top, and it seems like the two are uh, there are two options here, but they seem identical. But that is a pr another problem, as we pop outside using hangar extender. Uh, we need to put the engines on and that's the RD0120. Now automatically it tilts them which may be correct. I can get to orbit without tilting them actually but um, it might be to help point them through the center of mass they didn't tilt them. They probably need to be tucked in the problem is that these are also looking small, and that's probably better to do it with snap-on there. If we take a procedural tank, it might be that we should build the Energia side first. It's uh, more than 10 meters, or about 10 meters. Power units, rocket, Energia, first stages. Okay, well... Anyway, there are a lot of separatrons too. There's this, 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 that, and I'm not entirely... I, maybe using the craft file initially would be a good idea to get that part right. All right, but uh, leaving this for now, let me just put the boosters on. Okay, there we go. Nope. Uh, wait. Yes. Uh, there we go. All right, and obviously we'll want a pair on the opposite side as well. And putting them in uh, this symmetry is probably better. But it's all academic, because once we put the engine on, we note that it looks really small. I mean, there's no way that's the right size for it. And it's th this is from Real Engines, and it's not Real Engines' fault because we can take... these are called Zenit boosters and they were later used for the Zenit rocket and that is the actual size of a Zenit booster that's from Raider Nix mod so and you can see it matches the RD-170 from a completely different mod but definitely does not match the size of this Energia first stage so let's take a look at those configs to see what's going on so there were two configs in the RO part of all this, and one was for Bren and the other was for, well, there was a whole folder of them, but mainly we were looking at this Energia one here. 
And what we see is that the original parts, like uh, this is the second stage hydrogen tank, uh, the initial scale is to uh, KSP stock standard, which is 0.64. So it's been rescaled down, and so was modeled originally in the right scale. Uh, in other words, uh, so it's the realistic scale uh, that it is modeled in. And then we have all the attachment nodes. That's, that's important. We have to worry about what happens with the attachment nodes. But then, uh, when we go to the RO config, this is the RO config for it, not only is it rescaling all these parts to one, which is the correct thing, it is also adding this rescale factor, which increases the size further. And that might be an attempt to adjust the location of the nodes, but I think it's also made everything bloated. So it's actually larger than it ought to be. That's just a theory, and we are going to find out whether this hypothesis is correct, because having showed you what the original config is, I'm going to uh, change the rescale factor, and we're going to use the search and replace function. And I'm just going to search and replace all those. And it's generally not a good idea to use uh, the rescale factor for this purpose of adjusting the nodes because it has in, uh, inconsistent results. So I'm just going through and changing all the rescale factors to one. Okay, and then for Baran, the rescale factor is two for some reason. Now, the original parts for Baran are also scaled down, uh, the, uh, 0.64. So two seems big. <laughs> um, hmm. So the normal way of doing this, the way I would do it uh, for my own parts and for other people's parts, is to copy the section. And it's actually done here. Oh, um, no, this is an at model. OK, uh, we might have to do a lot of things. OK, let me just. So here we reinstate the model to the full scale. And we'll do that. Um, well, it already cites the scale there, so we can just do at. This says at rescale factor 2. And I, yeah, let's just not touch the rescale factor. OK, so this is the beginning of the format. But we already have a model here. See, this isn't addressing that model. So we'd have two models. That's not right. So exclamation mark model. And that gets rid of the original model. And if we uh, see with my own pass-through station, you see I get rid of the model and then do this stuff. And yeah, why don't we just make sure reskill factor is one? So that's that's the general format. I don't know. Uh, it doesn't seem to rescale the manipulators, so I won't touch that. But all the other parts will have to have this. There's a rescale factor 1.2. That's weird. So, so some parts are being rescaled by factor two, and some by 1.2. Yeah, I, I I don't understand at all. Let's take a look at the cargo. Uh, well, these are all docking ports. I'm not too concerned about the docking ports, but all right. Let's see what the original files look like. Base docking port. Well, this says rescale factor 0.63. And address the model like that. That's an old fashioned way of doing it. I'm just going to pass on the airlock for now. And we're not using this engine. This is uh, being replaced by the real engine's engine. So I'm not going to do everything. We do need this mount. And so we need to find the original name of the part for the mount. Okay, and the fuselage, but the question is whether the nodes will be in the right place. That we don't know yet. I don't know what this engine mouth OS is, actually. I don't see the model of it. So I'll pass on that and then we'll, we'll find out 
later on. Same for the uh, the shoot, I guess I can do. Now, I don't know, I might be getting this completely wrong. We'll find out. But you know, it would be nice to have a good functional run. And at least the landing gear seems to work, maybe. Maybe. We will have to actually see it work in practice. Uh, this says Elvon left or Elvon right. Somebody tried to make things easy on themselves. No, we'll do those one at a time, thank you. Rescale factor would in theory allow for that, but again, we, and same for the wing. Okay, so maybe this will lead to horrendous chaos and confusion, but let me reload the game and find out if we get things in the right size or not. Okay, so the cockpit, that still looks pretty big. Let's see, cargo bay. According to Wikipedia, the payload bay diameter is 4.65 meters. Well, it's closer. Before it was more than more than six meters. So it does it does depend on how exactly to measure the payload bay diameter. Let's continue building it. At least it's in the ballpark. Uh, yeah, the airlock needs to be resized, but that was being done in a different way. So. I'll have to figure that out separately. There is a, a node up there. I think that's for the parachute. We did resize the parachute, but it's marked non-RO, but probably doesn't matter because it's just a parachute. And we need the RD-58. Now, does it look a little bit more appropriate on this? It's still sort of smallish. I'll have to check out the engine tilt on it. And I forget how tucked in they are. Okay, so there we have a thing. All right. And then what about Energia? Oh, let's check the overall dimensions. So height 50, oh, sorry, 35.4 meters. That's the length. The length in Wikipedia says 36.37 meters, so this is pretty close. With 23.5 meters, in Wikipedia it's 23.92, so again pretty close. And uh, it gives the height on the landing gear, but not height otherwise. Does the landing gear deploy here? I didn't check the wing ones. Oh, good enough. Okay, so we do have deployment there. Alright, so Energia we will proceed with and see if we've got something good going here now. Central power units. Uh, I hope that's right. Hmm, that did not get resized. Okay, what part was that? Oh, uh, but its rescale factor was different. Shoot. It was 1.25 instead of 1.5. Uh, 6. Okay, uh, obviously this part here is going to need to be resized, but let us just build it out and see if there's anything else that has a problem before I reload. Seems a bit close, snug. Okay, but with the engines on, let's get the engines. Ah, now the engines look right. Now things are looking better. And if we put these here, well, obviously they'll need to be tucked in, but we're in the right ballpark. I think tucking them in until that circular bit makes sense. All right, so, and these need to be, and we need the boosters on the opposite side as well. The whole decoupling thing is going to be a question mark because uh, I haven't figured out where exactly those little separatrons go. And this looks a little bit tight too. Okay, roughly speaking. I feel like Varen is a little bit high up on it, but anyway, roughly speaking, that is looking better. Let me get the external tank decoupler resized properly and reload with that. Okay, the physical size of the decoupler seems right, but it seems not quite... 
the attachment node doesn't seem quite where it needs to be. It's still floaty. Not only is it still floaty, but I would expect Miranda to sit a little bit lower overall. So... Maybe something's connected to the wrong node or something, but... Uh, no, let's not do that. Hmm, this is not the launch Energia launch pad I remember from this mod before. Uh, I remember a much spiffier looking launch pad, and that arm doesn't look like it's in the right place at all. Um, maybe it should be rotated, but it doesn't feel like it's the right size either. It looks like it's a little bit small. Yeah, that doesn't make me feel any better, but yeah, it's not... Well, those are umbilicals. Is there like a crew access arm? Feels wrong. Anyway, so yeah, that's that's not the one I remember from the mod. So I'm confused. So we're gonna just go with launch clamps. I'm expecting that the boosters won't separate right because we don't have the little separatrons on them. But there's a lot to test, so we'll we'll see whether other things are right first. I feel like I, I I think these were a little bit fur to one side instead of just directly centered. There might be a node somewhere. It's probably not that extreme. I'll have to take a look at reference images for that. Okay, well, it's a, it's a start. At least it's the right size-ish. And we'll go out that way so I don't have to do a roll. Even though they did do a roll, even though they didn't have to do a roll, that's a long story. Well, actually it's not that long, but we have Delta V we're supposed to have, and we have the burn times we're supposed to have. So that's good. And let's go and see if there's anything else that needs to be worried. Uh, I need to worry about. Uh, the We don't have any payload in there, so the payload capacity seems fine. I didn't notice Delta V in Baran itself. We'll have to take a look at that. Oh, the shader problems. <laughs> uh, Textures Unlimited could fix... Oh, maybe. <laughs> maybe could fix some of this. Um, wow, all right. Wasn't expecting that one. Okay, we are obviously not in Baikonur, but that is not what we're concerned with right now. Ignition. All right, and launch. Well, it's going up. I don't know, uh, so when, when we're at this distance, Bran has these shadows on it, and when we're here, it doesn't. I don't know what that's about. Might be my post-processing mod, I don't know. There's a certain distance that makes that happen. That upper tank just needs, like, textures unlimited or something. It's got a bump mat issue, I think, is what happens with that. Well, Baran from Cape Canaveral. There you have it. Alright, well, let's see how separation goes without help. The wings are probably at risk. Uh, or... Or do you just go straight off? Oh! Or, well, one of the boosters got destroyed, but we didn't lose anything. Uh, it's wiggling quite a lot, though. Uh, the engine tilt is causing us to use a lot of pitch authority. Uh, as I expected, we probably didn't need that much. This is obviously the better side for the top tank, because this side, the shading is weird. I mean, this side, the shading's weird too, but it's just not as weird. Oh, we, we've got oxygen RCS thrusters, I bet. That's why we have all this oxygen. And there's a LOX to oxygen converter. 
Um, it's technically supposed to be Sintin Gaseous Oxygen RCS, which is special. Yeah, even as we deplete fuel in the main tank, the pitch hasn't really changed, so obviously the engines are not tilted where they need to be. But at least they're not throwing us off. The wiggle's annoying, though. Okay, let's shut down there so that the tank the orbits. We have plenty of Delta V left because, again, we're not carrying any cargo. And also it's OP for Varan anyway. Separation, separation, and let's just go RCS on. Well, the back one seem to be working. Uh, front one, well, it says active. Uh, this says no kerosene. Why does it want kerosene? Uh, oh, 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 my mistake. That's my mistake. We need to configure the RD58s to the right variant, the one that uses Sintin and Oxygen. So, well, we can't make orbit right now. Let's see. Uh, can we... Force roll zero. That feels very reaction. Oh, there's a reaction wheel. There's, oh, there's a re... I didn't even notice that. They left a reaction wheel in here. That's not realism overhaul. Okay, well, so other thing we need to do, get rid of, there's a lot to be fixed. <laughs> uh, there's a shader problem on that tank, there's this reaction wheel business, in the thread it said that it didn't have enough drag, so really re-entry wouldn't work. The vessel mass seems rather light at 48 tons. I'll have to double check that, but that seems lighter than it ought to be. Um... We just, we, we have oxygen replacement just by boil off right now. That's good. And I guess the RCS was working with Sintin. Okay, so, yeah. Yep, well, at least I got it down to the right scale and other things work. But, like I said, fixes will need to be made. And uh, I have other things to do at the moment, so... Uh, but we will continue reviewing this situation in the future. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.